boys will never know how satisfying it is to do your makeup and get ready on the floor. They'll just never get it. Someone came over the other day and they said, is that a raccoon? <laughs> My cat ran past them and they thought it was a raccoon. And I just can't get that out of my head. A little bit of a under painting situation. This has been my go-to lately. I just start off, make myself really dark to the point where you're thinking, wow, does she use the same tanner that Donald Trump does? And the answer is no, I don't because I can't afford it. Color pop. It's a tinted moisturizer and I like to do a shade that's again too dark for me. I just I don't know if other people feel this way. I think that they do because otherwise the cosmetic industry wouldn't be a billion dollar industry. Um, but I feel put together if I'm wearing makeup even if I'm like at my lowest, you know, $3 in my bank account, I'm on E, car and mental state, um, but, you know, everything is fine because I just made my bed and I did a full skincare routine and I did my makeup, you know? And the girls that get it, get it. That's all. So, I have a point to this video, I promise. Um, today I cried in a parking lot because I just felt so seen by God. I did. And I don't wanna take this life for granted because it really is just so beautiful. I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but I was going for a walk and I saw flowers and just that simplicity reminded me that God is the creator, that he is the maker of all things, that he predestined me to know him. He created me. I think that was my verse this morning that I was reading. Actually, I know it was. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That wasn't the point of this video at all, but you know, we're going to go down some rabbit holes here. Anything that he wants at any given time, we have no control over our lives. We think that we do. We decide where we're gonna go to college. We decide what we're gonna do for a job. We apply to said jobs, but ultimately God is the author. And I felt sad because there's things in my life that are causing this sadness. I'm getting older. I'm not married. I don't have a family. And I'm just like, oh God, what? When is it going to be my time? Am I ever going to get married? Am I ever going to have kids? When am I going to be financially stable? <laughs> um, all of these things. And just, just feeling really sad about that. And then I'm reminded of who God is and that nothing in this world could ever satisfy me the way that he can. Nothing will ever be better than his presence. And I think, I know that the enemy knows that. I know that people 
at their core. I know that they know that because as a society, we have gotten so far from God and religion, even though Jesus wasn't religious, he actually advocated against all of the religious zealots. But when the church is thriving, society thrives as well. And that's proven all throughout history. You can't ignore that. Those are facts. And as a society, we have gotten so far from that. But also, I think we've gotten closer than we ever have. People are waking up and people are realizing homesteading is good. It is good to make your own bread. It is good to be with your children every single day and teach them to read. I actually saw this thing that said um, feminism is you leaving your children with someone else so that you can go make money from another man when you could just stay home and raise your own family. Whoa. <laughs> um, do I agree with that a hundred percent? No, not really. I think that it's good for women to have jobs. <laughs> I think it's good that women aren't considered man's property. Um, I don't love that Mrs. means that I'm a Mr's. I don't love that. Um, and I struggle with marriage. I know I do. I struggle with the idea of marriage and one person for the rest of your life. That's terrifying. Made you fearfully and wonderfully made. There was, um, this frog <laughs> that jumped on my car like holding on for dear life. And it reminded me of this woman that I knew who had this whole frog collection. And I remember thinking, how bizarre is this? And so finally I asked her, what's with the frogs, girl? And she said, oh, it's an acronym. Fully rely on God. And in that moment, I needed the Lord. I was crying out to him in a way that I don't think I've done in a while. I haven't really been going to church. I've been reading my Bible, but like, it's not, it's not what it used to be. Makeup, I like hair. I like to think that God gave me some sort of calling with that. But I also feel like it's so superficial. Like me filming myself putting on makeup and not talking about God, not talking about important things in this world. Like, ugh, that sounds disgusting. That's nauseating to think about. This is a bunch of jumbled up thoughts. <laughs> know him is to love him. To know God is to love him. And there's a difference. I had a client who I met her and right away I was like, she loves Jesus. And I knew it. 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 I was in this Bible study and the leader of the women's Bible study said, you know, I don't know about you, but I can tell when someone's a Christian. There's a difference. Um, there's been so many times when I've wanted to walk away from my faith. I don't know if you're supposed to admit that out loud, but I just did. And there was one specific time when I remember like, I'm done. I don't want to run the race. Something horrific happened in my life. And I just remember thinking that was when I was the closest to God and the worst possible thing happened. I, I'm afraid to get any closer. I'm afraid of what more he could ask of me. I'm afraid of, of what dying to myself really looks like. And that's the kicker. 
that's really what people have a hard time with. It's so easy to go to church on a Sunday and wear a dress and bring your Bible and open it. It's so easy for a pastor to get up there and share three verses and then ask you to donate. But really, they're not dying to themselves. That's the hard part. And it's not just a one-time thing. Yes, Jesus died on the cross once and for all for the sake of our sins. But it's a daily process of waking up, picking up your cross daily and following him. Yeah, so I haven't been dying to myself like I should. But I've met people who walk with the Lord in an intimate way who you can tell that they pray. And there's no substitute for that. Um, my friend's mom, and she would talk about her mom all the time. She was like, yeah, she's like a, a woman of prayer. And I was like, oh, I just gotta meet her. I gotta meet her. I gotta meet her. And then I saw her. And I just knew that that was her because she had the glory of the Lord all around her. Because she was somebody that prayed. And you could tell feel a lot like Hager. <laughs> she, she ran, rightfully so. She was being abused. She was being mistreated. And God didn't change her circumstance. Magically, um, you know, part the Red Sea or anything like that. But I think that the miracle was him revealing himself to her. And I think a lot of times we, we pray and we ask for things when really the miracle is that we get to know Jesus. The miracle is that we get to be his people. That's enough. That's enough. Maybe going to change the circumstance, but he is going to change our heart towards it. And if he is with us, if he really is the very breath that we breathe, then gosh, what else do we need?